Introdu introduction to myself. My name is Beverly Ann Warrior. I use she, her pronouns. I work in UCLA Graduate Division as the coordinator for outreach and recruitment. What does that mean? Basically, one of my responsibilities is to encourage people to apply to grad school, um, prepare students to apply to grad school, and really answer questions about the hidden curriculum of grad school and kind of dispel some of those myths about advanced degrees in higher education. Some background about myself. Um, I am from Los Angeles, which is unceded Tongva and Gabrielino territory. Um, I went to UC Santa Cruz for grad or for my undergrad and then took a few years off of school. Um, I worked for about Oh, six years, I think, um, before applying to grad school, uh, and really used that time to even decide if grad school was a good fit for me. Um, I have, my background is in community organizing and advocacy. Uh, I've been at UCLA for a total of 10 years. Um, I also earned my degree at UCLA in student affairs. So my master's is from UCLA, um, and I'm happy to now kind of encourage the next generation of scholars to consider graduate degrees as well. Very proud to be first-gen student. So a first-gen college student, first-gen grad student, and now I consider my first, myself a first-gen working professional. Um, just by show of emojis or in the chat, any other first-gen students in the house? Yes, I see a couple of folks already. Love it, love it. Um, and I get really excited. Yes, love me up in the chat. I, I appreciate the energy. Um, I love opportunities like this because I think the academy that we know today and that we are being trained in is going to be drastically different in five years, in 10 years, and 15 years. And you all are going to be on the front lines in making that change, right? We're in a system that wasn't necessarily built for or by people like us. And I think especially after the year that was 2020, folks are really starting to be critical and looking at, well, what does this mean if we're in a place of higher education that wasn't necessarily designed for folks like us to succeed? So I'm excited to share this presentation with you all today. I work on the positive and I like to say when you get into grad school, not if you get into grad school. And I look forward to calling you all doctors one day and knowing that you're going to be sit sitting at positions of power in leadership positions and really affecting that change um, that we need to you know, transform the academy. So all of that said, <laughs> We're going to get to the fun part, fun part of talking about how to write a statement of purpose. Um, so today's presentation is going to focus on a few things. You'll see a lot of um, GIFs and emojis in the presentation throughout, um, but we're going to focus on things like what is the statement of purpose. We're going to talk a little bit about understanding our audience. So tailoring our message to who is going to be reading our statement of purpose. We're going to be talking about the context of, of the application and kind of who's reading um, our application. Then we'll get down into some of the mechanics. The outline of the statement of purpose, we'll close out with some final reminders. And I'm going to try and zip through this presentation so that we can really get to Q&A from you all. Um, again, if throughout today's conversation you have questions, feel free to add those to the chat and we'll try to get to those at the end of the presentation. So let's start. We're going to now discuss what is the statement of purpose. Generally, you want to view the statement of purpose as an introduction to yourself as a scholar, to your academic abilities and your professional career specifically as it relates to what you want to do in the future. And this is going to be your application reviewed by the admissions committee. Um, I like to think about the application package with all of its components as various voices and your way to introduce yourself to uh, the admissions committee. And the statement of purpose is you introducing yourself in your own voice right? You have things like the letters of recommendation. You are going to be asking recommenders to talk about you, but the statement of purpose is special in that you get to talk about yourself 
to the admissions committee directly. Um, the, the statement of purpose is also a space for you to show how you are prepared to enter graduate school. And ideally, each statement of purpose is going to be tailored to the individual program that you're applying to. You might have a basic template, but there might be a few sentences, maybe a paragraph or two that I encourage you to adjust as needed, depending on the program that you're going to be applying to. Now, what is the goal of the statement of purpose? This is a vehicle for you to demonstrate your qualifications as an applicant to this grad program. And it's a way for you to differentiate yourself versus all of the other applicants that are going to be applying. So really you are asserting your value as a scholar, your value as a student. And I want to kind of, you know, flip this on this head. You're not necessarily, well, in some ways you are applying to be a student in a graduate program, but I also want you to think about this as you are applying to be a junior, 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 junior faculty member. So your admissions committee is reviewing you and taking a look at, do I see this person as a potential peer in the future, right? You're not a faculty member now, but you're gonna frame your statement of purpose in a way that it makes sense to the admissions committee, to the faculty that is reading this, that yes, you are a scholar, you are a future peer. And this is also a space for you to highlight fit. You might be hearing this a lot in uh, as you are seeking out grad programs, but this is a space for you to really show that you are a good fit for this graduate program. It could be the faculty that you want to work with, the research that you want to conduct, your general preparation and readiness to enter this program, or what you want to do afterwards, which is the impact that you want to have as a result of attaining your degree from this institution, right, from this specific graduate program. And like I said, this is a way for you to present yourself as a future colleague, as a junior, junior faculty member that just needs a couple more years of training before getting to that position of power. Um, now, now we're going to discuss the types of admissions essays. Across the board, more than likely, you are going to write a statement of purpose as kind of the main admissions essay. Um, this is really focused on kind of you as a scholar, you as an academic, your research preparedness, so within the statement of purpose, you're going to be focusing on why you're motivated to apply to the program, what prepares you for this program, so your education or your training, skills that you're bringing with you, and then what are your professional goals that relate to the pursuit of this degree? What is the impact that you are hoping to make as a result of you know, getting your PhD at UCLA, for example? Right? How is this specific program going to help you attain your goals? Now, I want to contrast that with the personal statement. They're both named with the word statement in the title, but they are actually two very different essays. Like we talked about, the statement of purpose is going to be you positioning yourself as an academic, as a scholar, your personal statement on the other hand, is pretty much what you wrote to get into college, into undergrad. It's more focused on your background and you personally. So personal statement in the graduate application is focused more on educational, cultural, economic, and social experiences that might have impacted or shaped your journey um, in the academic world. Right, so you can use this as a space to talk about your accomplishments, address any challenges or barriers that you might have faced in pursuit of an advanced degree or in pursuit of higher education as a whole. Now, is there going to be overlap between the two? Absolutely, right? We are whole people, we, are, we possess multiple identities. So of course, things that are not related to my academic abilities are going to have an impact on me academically and maybe vice versa right but 
the scope of what these essays uh, are, are somewhat different in that statement of purpose is really focused on what brings you here and what impact do you have, do you want to make versus personal statement, kind of what have you done in the past and, you know, who are you in a way. There's also a third potential essay that some institutions call the diversity statement. Um, generally, this is going to be tied to some sort of funding application or funding package. There might be a fellowship um, where you write a diversity statement in order to be eligible for that funding. But in some ways, it's very similar to the personal statement. Um, more so, the diversity statement is looking at leadership, resilience, persistence, service, and advocacy. Um, they are looking for ways that you have contributed or impacted or thought of diversity in higher education, right? By virtue of you all being McNair scholars, um, this is something that I would highly suggest that you highlight in your diversity statement, because the whole mission of a program like the McNair Scholars Program is increasing diversity within higher education um, by supporting students who are interested in applying to grad school, right? Because the long-term goal is that you apply to grad school, you graduate with your PhD and you become faculty, right? And you're changing the face of the academy. Um, the diversity statement is also a space for you to talk about just generally how have you planned or how have you impacted increasing diversity and access to higher education for yourself and for others. So by far, the two most common essays are going to be the statement of purpose and the personal statement. There are some institutions where um, the diversity statement is called the personal statement. So lots of jargon, but um, today for today's purposes, we'll be focusing on the statement of purpose. Now here is an example prompt from a UCLA PhD program. This program says, explain your background for graduate study in literature and language areas and proficiency levels. Please include immediate and long range goals. So we're talking about impact here in the field of the in in the field in your statement. Statements of purpose should primarily focus on intellectual interests and research plans. So we're talking about the research that you want to conduct through autobiographical material, oh, though auto, autobiographical material can be used where it's clearly relevant. So they're encouraging you if you if it makes sense to include some of what might be included in a personal statement. But this particular prompt is being very explicit for what they are looking for. Um, grad applications. I would say take a look at what is specifically asked for in the prompt. I've bolded here on, on the slide what this program is looking for. They want you as an applicant to talk about your background, specifically in literature and language areas. And then separately, they also want you to talk about proficiency levels. The next areas are immediate and long range goals, intellectual interests and research plans, and then autobiographical material. So as you are reviewing these types of things, I suggest that you do some of the me search before you do the research. What do I mean by that? These are some questions that I encourage you to ask yourself before you even start writing that first draft of your statement of purpose, because some of the answers to these questions might um, might bleed into what you're writing or might impact what you're planning to write about. So these questions include, what do you want to study in grad school? Be as specific as you can. Why do you want to study only this degree? You know, why does this particular degree make sense for you and your goals? Why did you decide on this particular program? Which faculty do you want to work with and why? Um, for this area, I would say it might be safer to identify not just one faculty that you can work with, but maybe two or three, um, because you never know if that faculty 
might retire, if they might leave, um, if they're not able to take students for the year that you apply, you want to pad yourself and just identify a couple other potential faculty mentors. Um, next question is, what kind of preparation do you have in this field? Uh, if it's not related to the field, what are maybe some transferable skills that you are bringing with you or what has informed you that uh, this field makes sense, given the background and training that you have. How is your experience related to this degree? And then what do you plan to do after graduation with this degree? Uh, I think that's a really important one because faculty want to know, you know, why this degree and what are you going to do with it? You know, how is the education that you earned here going to go out into the world? In terms of writing your statement of purpose, here are some tips. So the first one I suggest is after doing that initial me search, create an outline, kind of basic, but I think this is helpful because remember, this is you talking to the admissions committee. This is your story in your voice. So if you're sharing a story, it should have a solid beginning, middle and end, right? It's like a two page movie. So what is the beginning of your movie? What is the middle? What is the end? Second tip is to keep to the word limit. Um, be very mindful of whatever word limit or whatever page limit the institution is giving you. Um, you want to use your real estate wisely. If you are only given one page, one of the, the biggest tips that I've gotten from one of my mentors is good writers know how to write great writers know how to edit. So how are you going to trim the fat, so to speak, from your initial first draft? Uh, next tip is be strategic. That's kind of what I said. Good writers know how to write. Great writers know how to edit. And then aim for consistency. Be coherent in your presentation of ideas. Um, I think for your first draft, just get it all, all on the page and then worry about trimming and consistency after the fact, right? Um, just get all of those initial thoughts out there. In terms of structuring your statement of purpose, very commonly, um, the chronological structure is going to be uh, kind of like a default, but don't feel like you have to be tied to that specific structure. For the chronological structure, you're talking about your past, your proposed course of study, so what do you want to do in your grad program, and then your future career, right? So your past, what have you done before applying to this program that has either prepared you or given you the knowledge that makes you ready to enter this grad program? And I'll, I'll even shorten that. What makes you ready to be a first year grad student in this program, right? They're not looking for admitting faculty, they are looking for folks that have the potential to be successful in a grad program, and are they ready to be a first year grad student. The second area is your proposed course of study. So when admitted to this program, what are you planning to study? What is the research that you want to conduct? What do you want to accomplish when you are in the graduate program? And that could be walking away with skills, that could be walking away with experiences, um, you know, in addition to earning a degree, right? Do you want to impact undergrad, grad student mentorship? Are you looking to create a space in STEM for underrepresented minority students? Are you hoping to connect with faculty members to discuss X, Y, and Z topic because it's kind of like the hot topic right now, right? So what do you want to do in your grad program um, related to your research and maybe kind of tangentially related to your research? And then your future career. And that could be informed by what you want to do when you're in the grad program. But again, what is the impact that you want to make as a result of you earning this PhD? of earning this advanced degree? And how is this program going to help you accomplish your goal? Whatever 
format or structure you decide on um, that works best for you, the main takeaway, your main argument that you are going to kind of weave throughout uh, your statement of purpose is that your training and experience have prepared you to enter this program and that you are an asset to the grad program that you're applying to, right? You're just gonna keep that in the back of your mind that they are going to be lucky to have you because you're bringing this training, this perspective, this lens that they might not have or would be helpful to them as they move forward with their research agendas. Some general guidelines for writing. Um, you wanna make your statement personal, but not too personal. Um, you don't necessarily have to divulge your full life story. Um, and something that I like to point out is that you have a very limited amount of space, right? It's usually a page or maybe two pages max. So going back to the concept of good writers know how to write, great writers know how to edit. If you're starting your story as, you know, when I was in elementary school, that's going to be a lot of ground to cover in just two pages, right? So if you're going to be talking about personal issues or maybe something in your life outside of academics that has impacted your trajectory, I would say try to keep it kind of within the sphere of, um, you know, kind of recent events that have impacted. If you are going to go into something that is a little earlier, um, keep it short, keep it succinct, because like I said, that would be a lot of ground to cover. And you really want to get to what are you interested in doing in this grad program? And how is it going to, what kind of impact do you want to make? Um, the second tip is connect the dots with your CV and resume. This is not a place for you to just regurgitate the items that are on your CV or resume, but this is a space for you to connect the dots and tell the story of those experiences. And then the third tip is to customize your essay to the graduate program. Remember that you want to be as specific as you can as to why you're applying to this particular program why this program makes sense for you and your uh, overall goals. In terms of highlighting your value, um, this is a space for you to showcase what makes you unique or what makes you different. Um, so how do your interests match the faculty? Uh, if you are able to, I would say this is a good space for you to list faculty by name and then make that connection. You know, why are you interested in working with Professor Joe Bruin? Is it the research that they're doing? Is it the methodology that they're doing? Is it the, um, the lens or the framework that is similar to your own research agenda? So be specific, why this particular faculty member? And then in terms of the audience, keep in mind the folks uh, in this room are from different fields, departments, and so the culture of the different fields and departments that we'll be applying to might be different, right? So a couple of things to ask yourself are, what can be assumed as common knowledge in your field? And then are there terms, concepts, and frameworks that you should be mindful of highlighting or demonstrating your knowledge of, right? Maybe there are certain building blocks that you don't need to spend time on because everybody in your field is already familiar with it, but maybe there are other concepts that you want to show, hey, I'm familiar with this and I'm ready to enter your grad program. Um, culture and audience is going to be different from STEM versus non-STEM, so humanities and social science. And then are you applying to either an academic program or a professional program? Because that might also change the way that your showcasing yourself and your highlights. Um, also, continuing to talk about audience, your audience is going to be an admissions committee comprised of faculty in the program that you are applying to. So if you are applying to a, um, you know, art history program, there are going to be faculty from the art history department that sit on an admissions committee and are making the decisions of who to admit to the program. 
Um, in knowing that, this is, uh, again, you want to express your interests in a particular topic or period or question, your research agenda. Um, I would also say you might want to consider being open to other areas or maybe related topics outside of your own because you want to show a willingness to learn and to be taught. If you were too, you know, too rigid, the faculty might perceive this as, oh, this is not a good fit and they don't want to, um, they don't want to explore any other topics um, that are not listed. So you want to show some flexibility in what you want to pursue. And again, like I said, you want to be able to demonstrate your familiarity with the field, whether that's methodologies, concepts, framework. You want to show that you can speak in their language, that you are that junior, junior faculty member. And I'm seeing questions come in. We're going to get to all of that uh, during the Q&A, but thank you for continuing to submit questions. Um, all right, so in terms of the mechanics, we're going to talk about content now. So introduction. In your introduction, you want to introduce who you are and where you are going. So in terms of highlighting your unique qualities, not every student is going to be a McNair scholar. I would say that is something that definitely makes you unique. So highlight that in your statement of purpose because that shows that you have taken initiative to apply to a program before you are even in grad school that prepares you for research, that exposes you to working with a faculty mentor, that gives you research experience um, so that you're ready to apply to grad school. The second thing is going to be state the degree program or department and school. So just be very explicit. And this example is, I am applying to the PhD program in social welfare at UCLA Luskin School of Public Affairs. So just lay it all out there and be explicit so it shows that you are intentionally applying to this program. That is a signal that you have done your homework. Um, and then the third tip is discuss your evolution, the evolution of your research and academic interests. So what do you intend to study and why? How do you become interest, How did you become interested in this field? What is the connection between your inspiration and current research? And why is the program uh, that you're applying to the next and only logical step? Again, why this particular program? And I'm seeing some questions in the chat that I'll go ahead and address. Folks are asking, you know, how do you show an openness to a related areas without seeming like you don't know what you want to research or pursue? Um, a suggestion that I have is that you can you know, explicitly talk about the research agenda that you have, maybe particular research questions or subject areas. And then also say, in addition, I have also, I also have an interest in X, Y, and Z. And they can be related fields to at least show that you're interested in kind of these adjacent areas. Um, and then there is another question that I'll get to later in the Q&A. Um, in terms of content, as far as the body paragraphs for your statement of purpose, you want to explain your research experience and or relevant experience. So for example, if there is a research project that you are working on with the McNair program, this is a good space for you to show off you know, what have you accomplished or what are you doing in the current research that you're conducting? What are the results that you're finding? Or, you know, how is this informing um, or adding to the skills that you have as a researcher? You can uh, also talk about the academic background, training, um, professional experience that you have. So some are research programs, maybe there's an REU or um, research experience for undergraduates that you had before joining McNair. Maybe there's an individual project that you're working on. Uh, the next area is to highlight your research and academic goals. So if you eventually want to see yourself as becoming a faculty member, this is a good place to put that. Why? A couple of reasons. Um, it shows that you are thinking ahead. And it shows that 
you know, you are being deliberate in applying to this program because you want to eventually be faculty one day. It's also a good way to signal to faculty members how they might be able to leverage you in their grad program. So if you're interested in becoming a faculty member one day and a faculty member reads that, they might need a TA for their undergraduate class. And they might say, oh, you know, Beverly is interested in becoming a professor one day. Um, I need a TA and they need teaching experience. I could use them in, in my program, right? Or that's an asset that you would have. Um, there's other ways that you can also signal. Maybe there's a research project that you might be a good fit with, but you don't know about. So sharing these experiences, sharing these um, interests that you have is a good way to show the faculty member how you might be an asset to their lab, to the field, to the department. Um, and then you want to convey your understanding of the subject or field that you are pursuing. So again, being very specific with the jargon in terms of skills, methodologies, techniques um, that you've gained maybe from the research, research experience that you have. So here's an example of experience and methodology. So this student said, I documented detailed field notes, collected and coded a variety of student work samples and conducted in-depth semi-structured interviews with students who participated in the state university of this uh, so-and-so literature course, right? So this student is already talking about things that you might be very familiar with, but not everybody has had experience of, you know, coding or maybe familiarity with semi-structured interviews. So this person is already talking about different types of methodology and the experience that they have and even um, data collection. So that would be uh, one way that you can highlight your experience and methodology. And then you also wanna talk about current interests and fit. So questions you want to ask or answer are, how does your interest match the program? You want to, again, explain why this school is the next uh, and only logical step. What do you plan to accomplish during and after the program? Why this particular program? What attracts you to this program? And then the faculty that you want to work with and why. A common question we get is addressing challenges in your essay. So it'll be up to you whether you address this in your statement of purpose or your personal statement. Um, but if there is anything unusual or out of the ordinary in your academic journey, you can address it. Um, if you do, talk about the challenge, how you, have, how you addressed it, and then move on. Right, so the example here is academic blemishes. Maybe you had a really bad semester, um, but all other semesters you got, you know, pretty much straight A's. You can talk about, you know, this semester I had a very challenging uh, experience because of X, Y, and Z. But in order to address that, I did extra credit and I went to office hours. And I have since had an upward tra trajectory. Right, so you briefly talk about what the blemish is or what the challenge was, what you did in order to address it, and then kind of what the result is, right? If you have had straight A's since, mention that because it shows that you're consistent and this was just kind of like a one-time thing. Um, if you are talking about challenges, uh, try to use a positive tone and focus on the strengths or what you did as a result because I'll share with you that faculty, they're looking at your accomplishments, but they're also reading between the lines. We all know that research doesn't always go according to plan. So faculty also want to know, am I admitting somebody who is going to know to pick themselves back up? Am I admitting somebody that is resilient? Am I admitting somebody that is not going to have all of this negativity weighing them down? Um, I'm seeing really good questions coming in. We'll get to that during Q&A. Um, and then again, what was the challenge and how did you address it? So some applications might have a specific 
essay or maybe a different section where you talk about challenges. So you want to go through the application and see, is there a specific, uh, is there another area where you can talk about this so that you don't necessarily have to take up that valuable real estate in your statement of purpose. And then to conclude your essay, briefly restate your main argument, which again is you are an asset to the program and your skills and experiences have prepared you for entering this program. Um, you want to summarize your goals and interests in this program. So what is the impact that you are hoping to make? And then describe your career trajectory and goals for life after graduate school. So what are you hoping to do? And not so much what are you hoping to do? I would say, what are you planning to do? What is your goal? Regardless of whether or not you are admitted to this program, say things like, I am going to, my goal is to be a faculty member one day. Right? It's not going to be contingent as to whether or not this program admits you because your goal is to be a faculty member one day or whatever career goal you have. Um, just briefly, again, the diversity statement is going to be more focused on how you contribute to diversity on campus. It could be um, either the uh, impact that you hope to make as a mentor, as a future role model, as uh, you know, a participant in one of the programs uh, on campus, but you want to show that you are thinking critically of your position in terms of, of being a, a potential asset to the program and a future role model for students as well. And then just final reminders before we open this up to Q&A, uh, give yourself enough time to write. The summer is a great time for you to just get that first draft out and then worry about the editing later. Um, I would avoid blanket statements. What do I mean by that? General statements like I love to write and I, you know, I am, passionate about X, Y, and Z can only get you so far, right? Concretely, what do you have to offer? What shows that you are prepared to this program? It's kind of like that popular meme that's going around nowadays. Um, tell me that you're uh, passionate about grad school without telling me that you're passionate about grad school. Uh, reserve plenty of time for reviewing and editing, definitely proofread, especially if you're going to be applying to multiple programs. You don't want to mistakenly submit your USC statement of purpose to UCLA, <laughs> because that's definitely happened before. We do have students that, you know, we know that students are applying to multiple schools. <laughs> we just want to make sure that you're sending us the right information. Uh, triple track triple check requirements, whether that's page length or the prompt. Um, compare this to other documents in your application. You know, is there overlap? Is there potential for you to maybe shorten or abbreviate certain things because either it's included in your resume or your letter of recommendation is going to be focused on this? And then easier said than done, but I want to encourage everybody in this room to own your experiences, own your accomplishments, and use this as an opportunity to showcase yourself and show that you're ready to be a grad student in this particular program because the academy needs you. So um, this is not the place to be humble at all. So we're going to jump into Q&A. Um, just briefly, I want to thank uh, Dr. Sam Bersola, Bobby Smith, and Raslyn Rendon uh, for helping to contribute to various um, essays and uh, areas in today's presentation. Um, I am going to stop screen share and open it up to Q&A and then Niavi, <laughs> I'm hoping that you can help me filter through some of the questions that have come in. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I thought that we would start with the most recent questions. So if you guys do have any relevant questions right now, then please do send them in. But for our first question um, is, how would you go about tackling the whole schooling during a pandemic topic? 
Absolutely. So higher education institutions have definitely been impacted as a result of the pandemic. Um, you know, faculty are aware of what that means in terms of lost opportunities or maybe research experience that you weren't able to do. Maybe classes have been impacted and, you know, some institutions are turning from letter grades to mandatory pass, no pass, for example. Um, I would say that generally faculty know about this, but this is going to be a chance for you to connect the dots. So if there is a opportunity that you weren't able to get, for example, mention that in your statement of purpose. You know, I was accepted to X program and um, which was unfortunately canceled in summer 2020. Had I been able to pursue this program, my research would have been X, Y, and Z. And then if there is an opportunity or transferable experience that is related to that, that might be a good way to kind of balance out, right? So you're saying, I didn't get this opportunity, but since then I have worked on this research paper, I've done an individual uh, research project, um, I was able to do some sort of virtual opportunity, whatever the case may be, I would say, briefly talk about it because that is going to be a challenge that you can talk about and then what have you done to address that challenge with either additional work or some of the, the skills or experiences that you have to date um so i hope that answered that there i mean there are a bunch of different things that the pandemic has impacted so if there's something more specific that you all are curious about if you could add that to the chat maybe i could be more specific in my response as well Thank you for that. Um, so our next question is, if I'm interested in working with faculty and subjects that I've never researched or even know about, should I still apply? Ooh, good question. I think part of that is going to be the me search that you're conducting. Um, if you're interested in working with faculty, but you maybe have a different major, what prepares you to enter this program? What related experiences might you have or what has informed you to even pursue this if it's not something that you've worked on right i'll take myself as an example my undergrad was in theater arts but my master's is in education many would argue these are two completely different fields right but in between I worked as an academic advisor. I used my undergrad experience in student organizations to inform me about the you know, educational experience of first-gen students, right? So there are related experiences, even though that wasn't my major and I didn't formally take classes in education before applying to the program. So it's still definitely doable. You can do a, a career change or even uh, an interest, a change in interest. But again, you want to connect the dots and show off the experiences that you do have and how that either informs your interest in this field or makes you ready to enter this grad program. Great. Um, so Another question is, how do you make your statement of purpose stand out if everyone is just writing about research experience and goals? How do you um, prevent admission committees from just glancing through your applications or statement of purpose? Ooh, really good question. The thing is, not everybody is going to be writing about research experience and goals. Um, when I... <laughs> Again, I'll talk about myself. When I was applying to grad school, I didn't attend workshops like this. So I kind of was just basing off of, I was basing my essay off of whatever I found on the website. You all are getting detailed like X, Y, and Z, here is what you write about. So I would say, first of all, I'm gonna push back and say, don't assume that everybody else is writing about research experience and goals because not everybody has the preparation in attending workshops like this or being part of a McNair program. I think for you all, some of this might already be normalized and that's great. Like you already know what to do and you're gonna hit the ground running. Not everybody is coming with that frame of reference. So you're already in many ways at an advantage because you do know what to address and that will help you stand out. 
in terms of the other folks that are going to be writing about research experience and goals, how do you make yourself stand out with that? It's really going to be a variety of different things. It's going to be showcasing that not just not just the, the research and kind of the preparation. Again, remember, we're talking about fit. Why are you applying to this particular grad program and what makes you a good fit for either the faculty that you're working with or the research agenda of a particular department, lab, or research group, right? Because if everybody else is coming in with the same research experience and goals, maybe the defining factor really is are they doing the research that makes them a good fit for this grad program? And then what are the experiences that do make you stand out? Again, not everybody is a McNair scholar, so you're already kind of ahead of the game with that. Um, so I hope that is helpful as well. Thank you. Um, and so do faculty interests have to completely align with your research interests? Not always. I think it does help if your research agendas do align in some ways, but that's also the going back to the question of fit. Maybe I'm just going to pull some examples out of the air. Maybe you really want to work with penguins and a faculty member really is into marsupials, <laughs> but their methodology is informing your research of penguins. And that's why you want to work with them. Again, we are using this as a space to connect the dots. So if your research agenda isn't a 100% match with the faculty members, that's okay. But why are you choosing them? Why are you name dropping? Um, you're not just picking them off from a website, but be explicit, be specific as to why it would make sense for you to work with this faculty member. Is it the frame of reference they're using, the frameworks, the lens, the theories that they're using, the methodology, skills, equipment? I could go on and on. But when you are naming a faculty member in your statement of purpose, you want to explain why you are picking that faculty member. And are personal statements purely personal, or should um, they also reiterate academic interests? I think there's space for overlap, definitely. Like I said, we are coming in with our whole identities um, and multiple experiences. So if I think that if you're going to be talking about you know, your personal experiences, that could have led you to you know, what you want to do and what you want to pursue. So I think it makes perfect sense. Um, I'll again talk, use myself and as, as an example, as in, when I was applying to my grad program in education, I, you know, it wasn't until maybe two years before applying to the program that I even found out this field exists, right? Student affairs. When I was an undergrad, I had no idea it existed. But in learning about it, I was able to say that, you know, I'm using my experience as an undergrad at UC Santa Cruz, I didn't see staff that looked like me, I didn't come across too many faculty that looked like me, and I want to impact representation in the field by you know, serving as a student affairs practitioner. So that future students, um, whether they're female, uh, a PETA identified, from Los Angeles can also feel like there's support for them. So there are some ways that you're able to talk about both, but again, your statement of purpose should be more focused on academic scholarly work um, and your purpose for applying to the program. Personal statement is gonna be more geared toward your personal experiences, but can have the impact that you want to make uh, as a result of being in this program. And I'm going to look through a couple of these questions too. I saw another COVID related question that came in saying, because COVID kept most of us out of labs this entire year, I am banking on this last year I have as an undergrad to develop as much lab experience as possible. But with application submissions being due at the beginning of the school year, how might I include this? So very similar to kind of what I talked about, I would say if there is an experience that you are planning or scheduled to have this fall, 
share that in the statement of purpose and talk about what you're planning to do with that experience, right? I am admitted to, a, I was accepted to a research team and beginning fall 2021, we will be doing X, Y, Z. I am looking forward to this experience in growing my skills in coding, in understanding how to use X, Y, and Z lab equipment um, to conduct semi-structured interviews, whatever the case may be, right? What are some of the tangible skills that you want to walk away from, walk away with as a result of having this so that you're still showing that you're going to be ready by the time you enter this grad program? And I see someone else in a direct message asked to repeat the main argument. And I see somebody else asking about the slides. Um, so my understanding is that these slides will be posted somewhere. I think it's going to be a YouTube, um, but you'll have access to these slides. And again, your main argument, which is going to be slide 10, is my training and experience have prepared me to enter this program and I would be an asset to your department. That's just the little nugget you're going to keep in the back of your head that is going to frame your statement of purpose. As you're writing about your experiences, as you're writing about your impact, how are you addressing the fact that your training and experience have prepared you and that you would be an asset to this grad program? Awesome. And Niabi is also saying that the slides will be posted on the website. Thank you for that. Of course. Um, well, we are at the five minute mark. So if you do have like last minute questions that are urging for a response, then submitting them now would be a great idea. Um, but I'm also going through the questions. So we still have, we have until one o'clock, Niabi? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go through this chat and see if there's anything that we didn't get to. I see a question that says, given that the formatting is different, would the page limit slash word limits be different as well? I've heard both one to two pages and two to three pages for either statement. So I just wanted to ask. That is really dependent on the grad program. Um, there are some programs that give you as many as two pages. Other places, it might be max 500 words, right? So I would say and caution you to check the department website, not just the university website, check the department website of the program that you're applying to, because the, there might be a general university prompt, but the grad program might have a specific question that they want you to answer in your statement of purpose. So you really wanna make sure that you're answering um, and addressing all of the questions that the grad program uh, is putting out there. So keep in mind that, you know, usually beginning of end of summer, beginning of fall is when departments are starting to update their websites for the next year. Um, I would say this might be a good time to take a look to see if there are any updates from last summer, and then maybe use last year's application as a starting point to what they might potentially ask you again for this application cycle. Um, let's see, I have another question here. How do we answer questions about contributing to diversity on campus if we haven't necessarily participated in diversity related activism or advocacy? Oh, ho, ho, but you have. You are all McNair scholars in this conference. So you, by default, are in ways, you know, participating in diversity related activism or advocacy. I'm going to push back on that. You don't necessarily have to be on the front lines of a protest in order to be a, an activist, right? By virtue of you all being in a McNair program, you are already part of a program whose mission, again, is to increase diversity in, in grad school and higher education. Um, so you are, you are benefiting from diversity-focused programs like McNair. But also this program is, is kind of training you and, and preparing you to be a leader um, once you are in your grad program. So, you know, see yourself as a, a, an agent of change of being a scholar and being a McNair scholar at that. Um, 
let's see, I have folks that are pointing out one comment. How can we talk about non-academic skills a first gen, as a first gen American? I had to grow up translating documents, talking to professionals as younger as a younger individual because my parents' inability to speak English or working since I was really young, or do these not matter in an application? You hit it on the head. Um, those are all skills that you can highlight um, because you are showing resilience, you are showing other worldly skills. Um, you know, even something like talking to professionals as a younger individual. Let's flip that. At a young age, I have already acquired skills in speaking with professionals, right? At, at an early age, you already know how to speak as a professional. That's, that's valuable. Um, I've had to grow up translating documents, like all of these sorts of things I think are ways that you can highlight your assets outside of the academic space. So I'm thinking this might be more suited to things like the personal statement or the diversity statement, um, but you can definitely use your non-academic skills and experiences to inform the admissions committee that you have what it takes and you have skills um, that are applicable to grad programs and applicable to you being a successful grad student. Um, so I would say, yes, these do matter in an application. It's just about framing, connecting the dots, and then deciding where to put this information. All right, uh, we are at the top of the hour. Uh, Niavi, I think I'll hand it over to you to close it out. Yes, of course. Thank you so much, Beverly, for that presentation. Um, we are at the one PM mark. So the presentation is over. Thank you so much for all of your questions. And again, the access to the video recording will be on the McNair website. Um,